Welcome back to Knack Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I want to take a look at the show Severance, which is fantastic. It's going to be episode seven specifically, and I'm going to cover things like character contrast, in movement, lenses, prop usage, thought process, a bunch of stuff. So let's go. Like I said, this is episode seven, so it's going to be more towards the end-ish spoilery. I'm trying to stay away from spoilers, but just throwing it out there, it's towards the end. But before I do, hi, my name is JD, and I do act analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do animation lectures, reviews, I do a bunch of stuff. This is the pitch, as always, at the beginning. That's the channel, what this is about. Maybe you like it and you want to subscribe if you want and stick with it. If not, maybe I'll see you in one of my future uploads, but let's get to the first shot. Okay, I lied to you, this is actually from episode one, but I want to show you this just because of contrast. So for you as an animator, my big thing is always character posing. It's not your rig, right? You get in your T-pose, that's my rig, <laughs> and you bring those arms down and then you start animating. You have to think in terms of what is the mood of the character? Are they happy, sad? Do they love their job or not? And all that is going to inform the movement, the attitude, the posing, you know, all that stuff. And I love the contrast and just kind of eh, and how he walks, you can see this here, he has his head slightly back, you are like, oh, what is this, eyes slightly closed. There's no real enthusiasm in anything that he does. He's just slightly depressed. You can see this, the head is still, he's always kind of this, a certain tilt to it. And you can see that in his facial expressions. Look at that walk, I love that he's slightly hunched over, hands back here. There's just a certain uh, factor to it. Is that head tilt is always a bit of a gravity or something influencing the character. And I love the change here. Again, you can see the uh, And then this happens. The switch inside, the elevator, and you can look at the face. Look at how the face changes right there. So if you go from here to here, you can see he is straight. The face is thinner. So we're going from a long lens where everything is flatter. The face is flatter. Maybe I wouldn't say it's fatter, but there's a certain ugh to it. So now the lens is much wider and it shortens everything. And you can see that there's something when you have lens changes and I can blend that in, how the face gets flattened. So I love that this is just flatter and with that expression and then more active, straight head, thinner. Everything just feels a bit more, okay, I'm ready to go. And you can see this here in his walk. There's a bit more pep in the step. You can see this here. Oh, okay, what's around here? And I'm showing all this just because it's really important in your animation to really think about that. Those were two reallys, but it's really important. Just because when you do pose out your character, think about what your character feels at that moment. There might be a gradual change throughout the scene, but the character is gonna start somewhere. And again, don't go into, I'm just gonna grab my rig and start animating. Take that first frame and pose out your character. Really make it, it's, is he hunched over like this? Or is she more like that? Or it's just something where it's that first frame tells us about the state of mind and the personality of the character and then you have room to grow and go somewhere and i love that in the show that every time we see the outies and the innies if you know the show there's a whole attitude change the speed of it the, how they sit how they walk so well done and just in terms of posing it's great for animators now you know i like props so i'm gonna go straight into this he has to find something and he is wearing a tie and what i noticed here when i saw this dangling right oh is this going to go into the toilet but no, what he does here, it's slightly off screen, but not quite, but he's putting his tie behind his back. So as he has this here, you can see the tie is back here. And he does it again here because it might have fallen. He finds what he needs to find, spoiler. And then as he goes up, he puts the tie back down. Now, why do I like this? It's not just that you have something to animate in terms of, you know, a couple of joints here and it's dangling, some drag and overlap and follow through and all that stuff. To me, this is actually more into secondary action and just something where the character who is getting close to the toilet is aware that this might fall into it and get wet. So he moves the tie back. And to me, this goes into the character being aware of their surroundings. And again, props for me is not just that, i got two pens here now, that you just hold this. But there's a reason for that. You can show, is the person nervous? So they're constantly tapping and using this, maybe nibbling at it, I don't know. It's there for me as an extension to the character. And if you have something where a character goes into room, as I always say, for the first time or not, all those actions will be different. So for him to go in there and then lean down, if you are not moving the tie, which you could, absolutely, and the tie gets wet, maybe 
that's a story point. Maybe your character is not quite aware of things, not being careful, kind of clumsy. And then character leans down, tie is wet, comes back up. Maybe that as a surprise, he goes back up and you can see the tie is wet. And now that's something in your shot. How is the character dealing with this? Is he hiding it inside the shirt? Is he, you know, kind of wants to take the liquid out here and then, oh, it's dirty, puts it in. There's so many things you can do now because of his non-awareness and the tie being wet, that's now maybe the conflict in your shot. And as a viewer, that's interesting to see how is the character going to deal with this? So for me, again, props is super important. You can use that to showcase fine tuning, polishing things like a tie and hair, a hat or something. But I always think beyond that. Why do you have a prop and what kind of prop? And then use that prop to tell us something more about the character. Is the character clumsy or not? And so on. And I will always point out props because I love it because it's, it's just, it's an extra business and it can add a symmetry, right? What if he has to hold it back there and do something always like this? There's always something that will change your posing and the character choices, which I think will go beyond the default ideas and make your reel stand out because it's a new, different and creative choice. This goes into thought. So for the first time, kind of spoiler, this character waits for him and he is slightly confused. You can see this here. He has that moment of just the eye dart over what is going on, looks back at him. Okay. And then they keep going. And then as he goes forward, he's asking what's going on. He tells him there's a new security protocol and he has to guide the way. And you can see here the confusion on his face. But what I love here is that lead the way. Now look at his face. Little look there. Huh? Really? Okay. I guess I'll walk. And the awesome part about this is that this, that he's here and tells him to lead the way because of this new security protocol is new to him. So he has to process this, right? He hears all this, gets into his ear, has to process that, has to think about it. And then he makes the choice and starts walking. And even through there, you can see, he seems slightly confused. And I'm mentioning this because a lot of times students rush through thought process where it feels like you're actor in your scene, or maybe you shot reference and you're remembering all the beats. You're literally going through a checklist. One, two, three. It's basically, I come out, I say something, I hear it, I walk. But if you do this, the character is going to feel like a robot. Comes out and walk versus hey, what's going on? Really? Okay, I guess. And then you move and it's just, it will give us time to read the face of the character and it will make the character come alive because the character is thinking, processing, and then making a decision. So for me, as I always say, I'm paraphrasing, but acting is reacting. It's so important in your animation to let your character think and breathe and make choices and not rush through that process. And I know it might be tricky because as an animator, you might want to just animate. You don't want to just do nothing because it's like, Time is money, this is a demo reel, I wanna show off, I can animate. But I would say, give it some time, it's okay for the character to do nothing and just think. So we can just see this, just go and look at the eyes and see what the character is thinking. This one, and I love that, this baby has this face. This is a prop, by the way. This is more about subtext, and again, props revealing character. I don't wanna to say too much, but there's a lot going on with this character and she is not quite what she's pretending to be here. So she shows off, how to breastfeed, Okay, 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 it seems all nice. And when she's done, watch what she does. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, okay, now your turn. And you're not gonna handle a baby by grabbing the arm, having this dangle, and throw it there onto the couch. And I love it is that she doesn't really care. This is kind of a quick reveal of, I don't really care, I'm just kind of pretending. Now in this show, because she has, you know, a different role, I'm not gonna say too much, there's so much subtext going on, and I cut this out later on, but there are many, many moments where she is just staring and looking at her to see what she says, how she react, if she can get something out of her. It's really cool, watch her specifically for the subtext stuff in that sequence. So again, the usage of prop reveals something more about the character, and this is why I love talking about props and using props. This is definitely a spoiler, so spoiler warning, but I love this setup. You can maybe kind of see, but this is the character, right? The outline, and he's been talking to this character. Now a new character comes in, and it's, you know, it's not a good character. How about this, right? But I love this setup that we are showing now two points of interest. This person doesn't know that this person is here, but this person heard that this person came in. So this is already a really interesting relationship. As it continues though, you can see that we're hiding this other character, nicely done with the composition here. And he sees like, what's going on, who are you? And that character tells him a lie. And out of nervousness, he looks, at the other character. And this character now notices that and goes, oh, are you talking to someone over there? Just that idea that we have set this up to the audience, what's going on here. And now for you as an animator, you can play with this. 
You can have some movement here. Maybe there's a hand coming in. You make this a bit more obvious. You can have the character step away from this, pretending that he is alone, right? Separating himself from this wall. So there's just a clean silhouette of, oh no, I'm alone here, there's no one there. Or you have the character go to the right and it gets closer to the wall, almost as if he's protecting the other character that's hidden here. There's so much you can do after this setup. I love this. And then of course, now as a bigger spoiler, this happens at the end. So through all of this, you can in a way stall and then have the surprise of then this character come into frame. It doesn't have to be this, it can be something else, but this could be a long lead up after this introduction to have your character come in and do something there. And this could be a, a birthday party, a surprise party or something. That to me is really interesting. Something I would love to one point steal and change it. Obviously it's not like a full on stealing, but I really, like that setup and it can really lead into some complex pantomiming and guessing game for the audience because you're waiting for the other character to figure out who the other character is maybe you're waiting for the other character to come out and there's, there's so much that happens again this is just negative to the show there's so much that goes on with setup because there is a separation between a character at work and at home anyway watch the show it's awesome comment if you've seen it and if you liked it or not i love the show within the first shot i loved it just the setup the composition the colors the music so good speaking of so good if you thought that this was so good and you want me to help you with your shots and make your shots even more awesome i have workshops this is the pitch at the end but you can sign up you can start at any point whenever you want we can chat about things and i can help you talk about acting choices and a bunch of stuff so let me help you if you want you can email me link in the description with all information as always and then that's it for the clip if you're still watching thank you so much for your patience appreciate that you stay until the very end and hopefully maybe you like this now you subscribe so you don't want to miss any of those future uploads and if not maybe i'll i don't know, convince you later on and i'll totally up to you but that's it from me thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next upload